You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey everyone, Neri here from Drake Wing Gaming. As some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. As you can see, I'm coming at you today with another Let's Play episode of Dawn Chorus Rune's Path. So, let's see what we've got here. We're in Rune's room, talking to him a little bit about his hobbies and how much alike he and I seem to be. So, guys, I hope you enjoy your what is it today? Is Sunday? Today Sunday. And I hope you guys enjoy your Sunday and enjoy a new Dawn Chorus video going up. But anyway, I'll be doing more double uploads as the week progresses, so stay tuned for that. But anyways, let's jump right into it, shall we? If you really want to hear one, if you really want to hear one, but I can assure you that they're nothing special. Maybe even a bit embarrassing. Everybody has to start somewhere. I don't expect you to play me a multi-part masterpiece here. Okay. I'm not used to playing for others, though, so I'll sure mess something up. He picks up the guitar and hops onto the desk, resting it on his leg and strums the strings gently with his thumb, playing a mellow chord. I currently have it tuned to an alternate tuning I came up with. I have only one song written in that tuning, but I like the sound, so I'll probably work on more. Uh, but you probably don't know what the alternate tunings are, yeah? Hell, you probably don't even know what the standard tuning is. <laughs> not really. Okay, it's not really important. Guitar is a pretty weird tuning, because the strings are tuned five semitones apart, except for the fifth string, that's four semitones higher than the fourth one. A semitone is the distance in pitch between two adjacent keys on a piano. I think that's the easiest way to put it. That tuning is called standard tuning, and it's, pretty, and it's, pre, and it's what pretty much every guitarist uses. Alternate tuning is anything other than that, and they're usually constructed in such a way that all open strings together form a specific chord. You can get some more interesting, unusual sounds from that, and they're often easier to play in once you get a good grasp on them. I always like it when others gush about their interests. It's really sweet in a way. I can feel their excitement about stuff I have no knowledge of. It always makes me want to explore the topic deeper and get into it, too. I guess, that's, I guess that passion can be contagious. I tried writing some songs in them with varying degrees of success. We got all chords laid down for that one, but I'm still working on the melodies. Rune strums the strings again, this time pressing some of the strings to the fretboard with his left paw. The chord sounds sweeter and more joyful than the previous one. I move closer to him, sitting on the edge of the bed, and observe him play. He plays rather quietly and timidly at first, but after the first few chords, I can hear that he regains his usual confidence. Suddenly I hear a loud twang, and something sharp hits my face. Ow! I press my paw against my cheek, feeling a stinging sensation there. Ah, Fane! Carvin, are you all right? Rune drops the guitar in panic, leaning in and looking at me with worry. Looking at the instrument, I can see that one of the strings snapped and is now dangling limply. I think so. It just stings a little. Wait. Show me. He grabs my paw and gently pulls it away from my face, looking for a wound. He presses his thumb to my cheek and brushes through the fur gently, observing me closely. Damn, you've got a pretty awful cut. Carvin, I'm so sorry. Wait here just a moment, I'll be right back. Rune gives me a quick head pat and runs out of the room. I wonder how often this happens. I had no idea playing the guitar can be this dangerous. It frightened me a bit, but now that I know what happened, it doesn't even hurt much. For a moment, I think about picking up the guitar to take a better look at it, but I stop myself when I realize that another string might snap too. I wonder where did Rune go? He looked pretty worried. I hope he didn't panic because of a, because of a small scratch. I stand up to look at the mirror, and that's, in the, that's the, in, in the entrance to the room, and look at my reflection. There's a small stream of blood trickling down my cheek. Oh. I sit back on the bed heavily and raise my paw to the cut, feeling the wetness under my paw pads. The sight of blood always makes me a bit queasy. Okay, I'm back. Rune hurries into the room, holding something in his paw. He sits down on the floor in front of me and opens a small bottle he is holding. It's hydrogen peroxide. The cut doesn't look that bad, but there was some blood and strings aren't exactly the cleanest thing ever. Aren't you ever reacting a little bit? Definitely not. You don't want to get an infection. Now lean back and don't move. Not wanting to argue, I do as he says, raising my head and looking at the ceiling. He brushes the fur on my cheek with his thumb again to have better access to the wound. There's some damn good music. His touch is gentle, making me shiver slightly. He cleans the wound with hydrogen peroxide and a tissue skillfully. Being an athlete, he probably had his share of cuts and bruises himself, so that came at no, comes as no surprise. It stings a bit, and I hiss when hydrogen peroxide comes in contact with the wound, but keeps still. 
From up close, his scent is much stronger. He smells really nice. The cologne he is wearing mixes with his natural scent, woody and inviting, with a hint of jasmine and some blueberries. If someone this morning would tell me that I'd end up in his room, talking with him casually, I'd laugh at them. And here I am, talking about our hobbies, listening to him play his songs, and now with him kneeling in front of me. Okay, all done. You should wash it with soap later. You're really lucky that string missed your eye. You can't imagine how terribly sorry I am, Carvin. It's okay, it's not your fault. By the way, how often does this happen? I never thought that playing the guitar might be such a dangerous activity. Almost never, unless the guitarist attempts to do some wild soloing, then the highest string can sometimes break. It's my fault for playing in a weird tuning. I must have tuned the string too high, and I couldn't withstand the tension. I think I'll go back to playing in standard tuning for now for a while. You have no idea how, the, how much this frightened me. At least I've heard you play. The song sounded quite nice. <laughs> You're really saying that to make me feel better. But thank you anyway. Too bad you won't be able to play again now on this trip. Oh, I have a spare set of strings. Don't worry. I always have one with me in the guitar bag. Strings wear out very quickly, so I change them every month or so, whenever they get dull or rusty. Where did you get the hydrogen peroxide from? I borrowed it from Devin. I'll drop by his room later to return it. I told him I just needed it for a moment. I nod, standing up from the bed. You can go there now. Better not keep him waiting. I'll go check out if anything is happening anywhere else, and we can catch each other later. Hmm, good idea. Again, sorry that it ended up like this. Don't sweat it, it's fine. We leave the room together, and this time Rune doesn't lock the door either. Well, I guess there would be no point in that. There are only other students and faculty members here. I wish I thought about that before locking my door. After this, I'll go to the common space to check if there's anything happening there. If you'd like to join me there, feel free to. I don't know what I'll do yet, so if we don't meet there, have fun. I will for sure. There's some huge secret and there's some there's one huge secret to enjoying life that you should remember wherever you are and whatever you're doing. Try to remember always just have a good time. It sounds simple, but once you remember that, life gets easier. Take care. Good advice. Yeah, you too, Rune. You too, you big hunk. Locker room. Uh, oh, who's here? Looks like there's no one here. I decided to check out the locker room to see if anyone was in the swimming pool of the sauna, but it doesn't look like it. Where is everyone? Let's see. Check the sauna. No, I go to the common space, because Rune is there. For a moment, I think about going to the sauna alone just to relax, but frankly, I'm already plenty relaxed. Just bored. Rune told me that he would be in the common space, so that's where I direct my steps next. There's a faint melody coming from somewhere. I stop for a moment and listen. It sounds like a piano, only muffled. Oh yeah, now I remember there was a piano in the common space. I continue walking towards that room. The closer I am to it, the louder the music gets. Walking into the common space, I see it's Miku sitting behind the piano. He notices me entering the room and stops playing, turning towards me. Garvin! Did you know they have a piano here? Yeah, I've been here a few times already. I didn't pay much attention to it, not knowing how to play piano myself. It's even in tune! I was afraid that it was only here for decoration, but someone has taken care of it. He touches the keyboard with such affection that for a moment I can't help but feel envious of it. Mm-hmm. That's good. I remember you always liked playing piano. That's right. I haven't seen one in a long time. Remember the one we had at our school? Oh, yeah. This one looks better for sure. There wasn't anything wrong with that one. It was just old. Still, it was so much fun. I sit down on the sofa, feeling somewhat awkward staying in the middle of the room. I was always pretty bad at playing piano, so I don't really share the sentiment. Oh, but I remember staying with you after classes and listening to you play. It brings back some memories, doesn't it? It does indeed. Why did you stop playing? Rune and Bjorn suddenly emerge from the corridor, walking alongside each other. Bjorn holds some book in his paw. From here, I can't read the title. Miko? And Carvin? Hello. Hi, Rune. Hey, Bjorn. I had no idea you could play piano too, Miko. Knowing your way around the keyboard helps a lot with composing. 
I actually started with, with the piano and switched to electronic instruments later. We heard someone playing the piano in here and came to listen. I hope you don't mind an audience. I don't, although don't expect too much from me. I haven't played a real acoustic thing in a long time. Rune walks into the room and sits down on an armchair. Bjorn, however, walks up to me and points at the spot next to me on the sofa. You don't mind if I sit here? No, no, don't worry. He sits down heavily next to me and leans forward with his elbows on his knees, resting his chin on his paws. I can hear the wooden construction of the sofa creak under a combined weight. Um, so... would you like me to play something? Sure. Hmm, maybe this one. Yuko turns towards the piano and lifts both his canine paws, wiggling his fingers for a moment before putting them down on the keyboard. Everyone goes silent in an instant, leaving only the crackling from the fireplace resounding in the room. Miko begins playing the piece, soft piano notes reverberating around the room. He strokes the keys gently, but with confidence. The three of us sit in silence, not wanting to distract him, but also enchanted by the music. I don't think he would notice anything anyway, completely engrossed in playing. There's a genuine smile on his muzzle, and he closes his eyes from time to time, his tail swaying from side to side with the rhythm of the piece. It's like he's playing with his whole body, not just his paws. The piece he is playing is delicate and calm, like a meadow brushed by a gentle autumn breeze. It makes me feel like I'm floating above the ground, or being carried away by a gentle stream. It's touching something deep within me that I haven't felt for a long time. His paws move elegantly in wide sweeps across the keys. It takes some effort, and he has to slow down in some parts, but from the look on his snout, it's clear he's having a lot of fun. He looks really happy when he plays. Yeah, I remember that from the times we were in middle school together. The only times when he looked genuinely happy when he was playing an instrument. Right now, in a smile, I can see the boy he was back then, getting lost in music and forgetting about the world around him. One second, guys. One second, guys. Sorry about that, guys. Cats are about to get into a little tiff. Uh, anyway, where were we? Oh yeah, piano. Let me save it right here. Right now, in his smile, I can see the boy he was back then, getting lost in music and forgetting about the world around him. Suddenly, I hear steps somewhere behind me. Turning around, I see Torolf entering the room, holding a banana in his paw. He raises his other paw to greet us, but doesn't say anything. Instead, he walks up to the free armchair and sits down quietly, listening to Miko playing. His steps feel deliberate and balanced. I hadn't noticed it before, but he walks in a really elegant way. Meanwhile, Miko finishes playing the piece. That was really nice, Miko. Miko turns towards him, surprised. Hi, did we meet before? <laughs> I believe not. Like mentioned you in a conversation, though. I know you're Carvin's friend. My name is Torolf. It's a pleasure to meet you. A pleasure for me as well. That was something, Miko. Aw, oh, thanks. Even if you're saying that only out of courtesy, I can't help but envy him. I myself struggled with playing anything on the piano, and there wasn't any fun in it for me. When I was listening to him play, I always felt inadequate. He started a bit earlier than me, and that was enough to discourage me. Miko used to tell me that I just lacked the resolve to push through the first phase when playing anything as a huge effort, but for me it seemed like I would never get out of that phase. The truth is, I'd never applied myself, while Miko kept practicing and practicing. Now he's better than I ever will be. No, that was really great. Where did you learn to play like that? Well, I had music lessons in school, like everyone in Finland. We were playing mostly stringed and wind instruments, but we had the basics of piano. I spent a lot of time playing piano myself, too. Oh, does it mean you can play too, Carvin? Um, not really. I had music lessons as well, but I was never good at it. Maybe you remember something from then, though? Maybe a few melodies, that's all. Would you like to play too? Oh, I don't know. I haven't played in a long time, and I was never good to begin with. Aw, oh, come on. I'm sure you're better than you think. We won't make fun of you. Don't worry. He has worry written all over his face. I don't know if it's a good idea, Rune. Yeah, I'll play it. I... I might try. I don't know what I'm doing, but it always, but it's always so hard for me to refuse when others ask me politely. The excited look on Rune's face for sure played a big role here. I wouldn't want to let him down. Even though I know in the end I inevitably will. Miko stands up from the piano and moves on to the closest armchair. 
I reluctantly walk over and sit down in front of the instrument. Resting my paws on the keyboard, I notice they're shaking. What should I even play? I try to think of any track I was ever learning. Hmm. There's one that was fairly easy to play. I think I remember it. I play the scale in which I think the track was composed, just to make sure that I remember it correctly. I don't know why among all the ones I've tried to learn, this one stuck with me. I haven't listened to it in a long while. Okay, I don't really know what I'm waiting for, not without some hesitation. I play the first note of the track and then the rest of the chord. The weight of the keys feels surprisingly familiar. The chord sounds nice and sweet. I forgot how nice it feels to play. I still feel everyone's eyes on my back, though. Okay, focus. I just need to go through the piece and not make any obvious mistakes. Desynchronizing left and right paw is just as hard as I remember. People often don't realize that and think that playing slow piano pieces is easy, but that's definitely not true. I feel like I'm writing an exam I forgot to study for. Okay, that's all I remember. I turn around to face the rest and see them all looking straight at me. See? That wasn't bad. Yeah. Sure. Poor Carvin. Carvin? Hey, I really mean it. Cheer up, you look like you're gonna cry. That was cool, Carvin. Really gave me chills. I really love Digcraft music. I'm glad you played that one. Bjorn. Pico gives him a disappointed look and shakes his head. Okay, that's actually quite funny. What's wrong? That's not Digcraft music. That's a masterpiece from the 19th century. Oh. Not gonna lie, I was sure that was Norway from the Digcraft soundtrack. I haven't played that game in quite a while now, though. I always love the music from it. It evokes so many memories now. I'm glad to see the time spent I... I'm glad to see the time I spent teaching you did not go to waste, though, Carvin. Oh. Right. That's why this piece stuck with me. It was the one Miko himself taught me. Frankly, I surprised even myself. Although that wasn't the best performance of this piece, to put it lightly. And it's not like I remembered much of it anyway. For someone who didn't play for a long time, that's really impressive, Carvin. You're really kind, all of you. I stand up from the piano and walk back to the sofa. My legs feel all wobbly under me, but I try to look calm and composed. I can't help but let out a big sigh of relief when I sit back down, leaning forward and hiding my snot in my open paws. Rune gets up and walks up to me, patting me on my back reassuringly. You did well, Carvin, don't worry. I don't know a thing about piano, but I could teach you some basics of the guitar later if you'd like. Actually, I wonder how does piano relate to guitar, if knowing how to play one helps with the other. Miko, can you play guitar too? Just what I learned in primary school. It was so long ago that there's no point in even mentioning it. I remember maybe one song. That was an easy one, by Neutral Minnow Hotel. Oh yeah, of course, you mean in the stereo plane over the sea? That one exactly, yeah. It's a classic. I don't think I've ever heard of it. It's not the kind of music you look for. It's the music that finds you. Anyway, you won't be able to help me much then. I'm afraid not. Unless you want me to teach you to play piano. Maybe someday. I don't have... I, don't, I have a bit too much on my paws lately. Oh goodness, a yawn! It has appeared! But thank you for the offer anyway. Would you mind playing some more, Miko? I don't remember the last time I heard someone play piano live. I don't think I've ever attended any piano concert. It feels different than listening to recordings. I can't really say what it is exactly, but it just feels so much more alive and magical. I know a few more pieces. And we have time. Hmm. As we sat together listening to Miko play, day slowly turned into night. Leaning on Bjorn, through the window I observed the last minutes of the evening sun, painting the sky red and orange. Soon after the clouds started to give way to a clear, silky smooth sky, slowly fading to black. So many things happened today already. The afternoon is over, but the memories of it will stay with me forever. Dun, dun, such pretty music. Ah, it's night time. It's getting close to rune time. Days end so fast here up north during winter. I don't feel tired at all. Quite the contrary, I'm full of energy, but it's already dark outside. Above me, the stars look like small pebbles scattered across the night sky. Here, Far away from the city and its polluting lights, they shine so much brighter. There's even the subtle band of light that forms the Milky Way slightly visible. It's a very cliche thing to think, but it's mind-blowing to think how big they actually are. 
So big and so distant. Impressive, isn't it? We stayed at the common space for more than an hour, first listening to Miko's plane, then just talking together. At the end, we were joined by Lake and Jorgen, who treated everyone with chocolate they brought with them. It was almost time for the stargazing to begin, so we hurried outside onto the terrace. Oh, all right. Thank you, uh, Alarm Chen. All right, guys, Alarm Chen is telling me it's time to end the video. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. We are getting so much closer to spending the night in Rune's room. Oh, I cannot wait to see how that goes. Oh, Lord. It's going to be nice. <laughs> But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell for the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!